early week five waiver wire, getting ahead of your league mates now. And I would start with Kenny Pickett, 5% rostered. And of course, my number one pickup, George Pickens, 39%. Both of these guys, though, I think deserve to go into 70 to 80% of roster ship as of this week. Preseason wise, Kenny Pickett was 29 of 36. That was an 80% completion percentage, went 261 and three touchdowns in a right, about three quarters of action, had 124 passer rating, was one of the top of all passers, the best of all the rookies, but really up there in the entire NFL. So he's looked good. I know today it was a little sketchy. One of the picks was a Hail Mary at the end of the game. Uh, so you hate to see those two other interceptions, but you love that he was just absolutely slinging it down the field 13.2 yards. Average depth of target, unleashing the ball. Don't forget that the Steelers had what big bid the corpse of Big Ben, fourth most pass attempts last year, and then the first and first most pass attempts the years before when Big Ben was healthy. They like to throw, they have their new gunslinger. They also ran him too, runs the ball six times, 15 yards, most importantly in the red zone, two touchdowns as well. Really good. The QB sneaks powered himself right through for two scores. Um, a big fan of Pickett, just in general, good weapons to throw to high-powered offense that loves to throw and some mobility now added in. I think you got yourself all the makings of a low-end QB1 if all things pan out. But more intriguing to me is his number one weapon, George Pickens. Six catches on eight targets, 102 yards. Uh, most of that coming with Pickett when he took over. 31 yards in the first half with Mitch Trubisky. 71 yards in the second half with Kenny Pickett. in a 33% target share in the second half with Kenny Pickett, 5.92 yards per route run in the second half. I know we're talking about, again, a half, a small sample of action here, but Pickens to Pickett, I've been saying it all year. It's going to be, it just sounds like a league winning combination. I think it's emerged here. I'm going to try to go get both of these guys in every league I can. The rest of the waiver wire isn't nearly as intriguing as those two. So I do, I know there's a long time to spend on those two, but they are by far the top two guys to go after, in my opinion. Um, just as an FYI, Mahomes has already gone to Kelsey for a touchdown, and Brady is driving and is in field goal range. Oh, so we um, got to get we'll, – we'll rip through the rest of this waiver wire. We'll get through your questions real fast, but, yeah, we got some uh, action. Let's do Josh it. Reynolds, 20% owned. He got seven catches – seven out of eight targets for 81 yards and touchdowns. Kind of like you say, anybody that's uh, getting looks in the Bills offense. Do I feel the same way almost about the Lions? I kind of do. Isn't it crazy? I yeah. love it. I mean, I just love this Lions team, especially for fantasy, just in general, too. They're so fun to watch. I wish they were winning more for Dan Campbell's sake, but yeah, Reynolds 17, 12 and 11 points in three straight weeks, double digits. And that's half PPR. So even better in full PPR wouldn't be shocked at all with the buy, not next week, but the week after most speculation is they're going to rest swift through the buy. I wouldn't be shocked at all to see them do the same with Amon Ra and rest him for another week as well. And Reynolds would be right into that high end wide receiver three, like mid range wide receiver two, the way this guy's putting up stats right now. So he's number two on my list. I did want to mention, we talked about it with Patterson, two guys getting 10 plus carries. Any running back that's seeing 10 or more attempts has to be at least mentioned. I don't think either of these Atlanta backs, that being uh, Caleb Huntley and Tyler Algier. I don't think any of them are overly worth a huge bid or anything of that nature, but Huntley looked like a bowling ball. He was just Every single time getting downfield, 10 carries, 56 yards, and a score. A lot of goal line involvement there. Tyler Algier also getting 10 carries for 84 yards. Calls in a catch for 20 yards as well. So it depends on Patterson's health. He is the guy when healthy. It could just be a hideous three-way committee, and none of these guys are valuable. That's probably, especially these two lower-end guys, Patterson will always be a little bit valuable. He's such a playmaker. I don't think either of these guys are that valuable, but at least you know if, if Patterson goes down, what two guys are going to be involved at this point. Yeah, Jamal Agnew, you have written here probably yeah. fool's gold. I agree. I'll still just give him a shout-out real quick. He had four catches for 50 yards uh, for the Jags in their loss to the Eagles. Um, Zay Jones was out of the game. That might have had something to do with it. I, I would not rush out and get this guy personally. No, I wouldn't either. But he was a, a quality wide receiver three for a good stretch of last year. Like This isn't the first time we've seen this converted kick returner really thrive. He was moved again, slot, backfield, kind of running these creative route concepts. Uh, they, they like him. They're using him more than freaking ETN at this point. So wouldn't be the worst possible receiver. You could add at 0% rostered. He's out there in your leagues, at least. Geno Smith, 12% rostered. This is who I'd right out. I might like run out and get this guy. Yeah, 320 yards, two touchdowns to the air, 49 rushing yards, and another score on the ground. No, he's not going to face the Lions every week. I think waiver wire pickup of the week should just be who's facing the Lions. Put them in your lineup at this point. 
But Geno Smith, that's now three of his four games have been 18 or more fantasy points. He looks actually good. He's got two great weapons to throw to. It seems so gross, but especially in two QB super flex leagues, or if you're desperate and your quarterback's just not getting it done for you, I really don't mind Geno Smith moving forward. I mean, I have Kirk Cousins in a league. I, I might drop him for Geno. Yeah. Will Disley, 3% owned. He's had a touchdown in three out of his four games and 11 fantasy points in all of them. I mean, 3% owned? Yeah. Like, that's kind of nuts. He's got great chemistry with Geno, especially when they get in close. It's gross, but we've seen this story with Disley before. Pete Carroll loves him, and he loves throwing to him in the red zone, and Disley typically rewards it. Alec Pierce, as we mentioned earlier, 80 yards, four catches, six targets, 5% rostered, big plays in back-to-back weeks. I think his role is only going to grow at the expense of Paris Campbell as the season goes on. It sucks that he's tied to a shitty Matt Ryan, but over 300 yards today, I think this guy's going to soak in some work as the year goes forward. I agree. Corey Davis, 24% rostered, five catches, seven targets, 74 yards and a touchdown. Not too terrible. I mean, Corey Davis has burned you in the past. Yeah. And as we mentioned, he, he, he is the guy for Zach Wilson dating back to last year. That's what we saw. I uh, ran, you know, less routes than either of the two Garrett Wilson or Elijah Moore, but saw uh, the most targets. So he ultimately he's his guy. He gets it done. They have the best chemistry. So just keep him in mind. We mentioned Khalil Shakir. Uh, he's out there in 99% of leagues right now. Just a nice talent that dominated the preseason and could be looking at a meaningful role in this Bills offense. And the last guy is another rookie, Christian Watson, overshadowed by Romeo Dubs in all the hype circles, and deservedly so the way Dubs has been thriving. But he did catch a touchdown today. That was his only catch, one for eight in the score. Uh, but just involved in this offense, played over 50% of the snaps, was the better quote-unquote talent coming into the year, so could end up carving himself out a role uh, so wanted to just shout that guy out as well. I think that's about it for the pickups, right? That's about it for the pickups. 835. The Bucks have uh, responded with a field goal, by the way. All righty, there we go. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.